name is Luke, and welcome back to another Interbotics tutorial. Today, we're going to be reviewing the Movit configuration package for ROS2 for the Interbotics X Series ARMS. To start, we will review the different configuration files uh, that are required to get Movit working. Originally, these were generated by the Movit setup assistant in ROS1 and ported to a ROS2 compatible format. Uh, we won't review all of the configuration files too in depth. Uh, we'll just point out the highlights. So the controllers, we'll look at the WX200 controllers configuration. So you'll see in here that we load two different controllers, the ARM controller, which will control the ARM planning group, and then the gripper controller, which will control the gripper planning group. We use the follow joint trajectory controller for both of these. Going back out, we will look at the SRDF, which is the semantic robot description format. We'll also look at the WX200 version for that. So you'll see in here, this is required by move it to set up the different uh, planning groups. So in here we have the Interbotics arm, which includes all of these joints, the Interbotics gripper, which includes these links. Then we set up the group states. So we have the group states for the Interbotics arm, which are home, upright, and sleep. And for these you can set predefined joint positions for these groups uh, just for easy access, easy control. And same thing with the interbody scripper, we have grasp being released home. And again, we're just setting different positions for these. And then below that, we have our end effector, which we define as the interbodics gripper group. And so that will just tell move it what to consider the end effector in this robot. And below that even further, we have our uh, disable collision setup. So we, for each of these links, we just want to say that these links should not be considered when doing collision checks. And again, this is all generated by the Move It Setup Assistant. So further on, we have our joint limit files. And so we set uh, different velocity limits, acceleration limits for each of the joints. We have our chomp planning configuration, our kinematics configuration, and the OMPL configuration. Again, we're not going to go too much in depth with those. You can look at their respective documentation to learn more. And finally, we have our modes. Uh, configuration file, and we say that the arm is operating in position and velocity, and the gripper is operating in linear position. And finally, we have our modes configuration, which we've talked about before. Uh, this just sets the operating modes for different groups or single servos on your robot. And we say that the arm group is operating in position and velocity, and the gripper single is operating in linear position and velocity and we're setting our different uh, limits here. So next we're going to take a look at the launch file for the XSR Movit package. Inside of here you can see that what we're really doing is just loading a ton of different configuration files and parameters, setting a lot of defaults and remappings, and giving them to the move group node, which is the main node that Move It uses uh, for planning and collision checking and all the rest of the things that Move It does. So you can see all of the parameters being loaded here, remappings being loaded here. Then we have our optional, or we have our Move It Arviz node um, where we load the, uh, the Move It motion planning plugin. Uh, so you can control your robot with an RViz. We also launched the XSR ROS control package if using actual or fake hardware types. And we launch our uh, Gazebo classic 
launch file if using Gazebo Classic hardware type. So looking at the structure of our launch tree, we have our entry point, which is the XSR move.launch.py file, which loads the move group node and rviz. And then depending on which hardware type you specify in your launch command, whether it's Gazebo Classic, Actual, or Fake, it will load a different set of nodes and include a different set of launch files. So if you're loading GZ Classic, or if you set your hardware type to GZ Classic, you're launching these nodes. The highlights being that uh, Gazebo is launched, and you are also going to launch the Gazebo ROS2 control plugin, which allows you to control hardware inside of Gazebo. If your hardware type is actual, you're going to launch the XSARM ROS control launch file. That loads uh, significantly more <laughs> than the Gazebo one. Um, the highlights here are that you're loading the XS hardware interface, uh, ROS2 control uh, system interface. And then finally, if you set your hardware type to fake, then we're just going to be using the generic system hardware interface. And we're launching the XSARM description .launch.py file. Okay, so now we will see these in action. So we are in our Innerbotics workspace. I'm going to source our setup.bash file. And ROS2, launch, Interbotics, XSR move it, XSR move it .launch .py. Set a robot model to the WX200. Then hardware type is actual. So just to note, the default hardware type argument is actual, but I'm specifying it here for clarity. So we launch, we see move group getting launched, we see our controllers getting loaded, and we have our visualization of our robot in black, and then a representation of the goal state in orange, which we can control uh, using this marker right here. So you'll notice as we move it around, um, the inverse kinematics engine is solving uh, pretty smoothly as we go. So let's say that this is the goal state that we want it to go to, and plan and execute, and the arm will go to that goal state. And you can also set the uh, the uh, different predefined positions here. So we have home, upright, and sleep, and we'll just set it back to sleep. Okay. The next one that we're going to do is the Gazebo one. So we're going to set our hardware type to GZ Classic right here. And note, you can also see all of the different launch arguments that are possible in this table. The relevant one here is this hardware type. So you have actual fake and GC classic. And if you don't want to move, or if you don't want to use move it, you can set use move it rviz to false, and it will not load rviz. That's different than the usual use rviz launch argument. Okay, we'll launch that. Okay, and now, instead of the actual robot being in our viz, we have the robot simulated in Gazebo. So we'll do the same thing here. Just set it to some arbitrary state, plan and execute, and there it goes. Show you the upright position, send it back to sleep. And there's that. And then the final hardware type that we'll look at is the fake hardware where it's loading that generic system hardware interface. So 
So this one with the fake hardware and then the one with the simulated uh, gazebo hardware, those can be used to test out your movement applications before you actually try it on the actual hardware. And that's it for this tutorial. By the end of it, you should know how to use the X-Series R Move It package to launch the motion planning pipeline provided by Move It. You should also know where to find the different configuration files necessary to load Move It. And you should know how to use the three different types of hardware, whether it's actual, fake, or gazebo classic. Thanks for watching.